Assalamu alaikum, Louisville. So yeah, the Black Panthers are in Louisville. Louisville's got some of the worst poverty in a state with one of the worst poverty. The state of Kentucky's got some of the worst statistics in the entire country. Uh, Louisville has its own specific set of issues, but not much different from the rest of the state. There's still the insanity, there's still the violence, there's still the police brutality, still the meth heads, still the white supremacists, uh, police brutality, I already mentioned that. The poverty, the racism, the homelessness, in fact the homelessness might be worse here than in other places, because it's manageable I guess in other places, homelessness is. So I was in the middle of um, talking about the Egyptian Revolution, January 25th, 2011, like the happiest day of my life. Egypt, motherfucking Egypt decided to have a revolution. Egypt, the pharaohs, the pyramids, where I think we learned like Sanskrit and writing and <laughs> I don't, World Civ, I remember kind of paying attention to World Civ, but Egypt was one of the beginning ones, right? For the Western society, Western society likes to steal from Africa and say, nah, nah, Western society come up with these things. So, Egypt is, uh, you know, I think of ancient Egypt and the fact that that mentality, that idea that it's ancient Egypt and it's being smashed into something brand new, that's, uh, that's amazing. That's incredible. Egypt is showing the world the path on how to win. So did Tunisia. So did the Velvet Revolution. Any of these revolutions that are being successful... Egypt, Tunisia, and uh, and I would even say, um, well, the Velvet Revolution and the, the old Czechoslovakia, the Czech Republic and the Slovak Republic against the the uh, the Soviet Union, you know, dictators. So those are three good peaceful revolutions that we can learn from because that's the only way we can have a revolution is a peaceful revolution. We can't have a violent revolution. They got all the guns. They got al alcohol, tobacco, firearms. They got David Koresh. You see what they do? They kill the kids. ATF don't give a shit. They'll kill the kids. The Border Patrol, they fucking shooting Mexicans. They don't give a fuck. They don't give a shit. Border Patrol, Navy, Marines, they got lots of people with guns in our society. They got Army. They've got Air Force. They got Border Patrol. Well, I already said Border Patrol, but you got, uh, what, Naval Patrol? You got... Uh, National Guard, you got Kentucky State Police, you got the local police, the city police, you've got Homeland Security, you got the FBI and the CIA. You're lots of people with guns, too many people with guns. You can't have a gun. I don't have a gun. I'll just get shot. I mean, that's like basically all I have, and that's the tactic. Peaceful revolution. Stand up for what we say is right. We're not here to make any damage. We're just here to demand our rights, to demand our freedom, and we should be free. We should be free in this country. So, no, no, the, the revolution should not be violent, okay? The revolution should not be violent. It should be peaceful demonstrations sustained for several days for a well-defined agenda. The Egyptians want to throw Mubarak out. They want to end police brutality, stop economic inequality, and, um, and, and have a democracy. So they wanted, you know, those are the main agenda items, the most main uh, items on the agenda. And I want all the same things, all the, all the same things, uh, virtually all the same things. We got economic inequality here, this police brutality here. I guess it's not, you know, it's not like uh, some of your poor nations, but we're America, and this is Americans, and it should be better. It should be better than this. And this country should be better than this. And the fact that we have homeless, the fact that Mayor Fisher's going to be pushing the homeless underneath the rug and pretend like the homeless ain't even here, like they, he don't give a shit about the homeless, like it's bad PR for the city to have uh, the homo, homeless visible. The fact that that's the position that Mayor Fisher's going to take, it just shows what kind of person he is, shows his fucking character. He's a dodger. He's going to just get away with fucking bullshit. He's not actually going to fix the problems. Mayor Fisher, you don't want the homeless uh, occupying public spaces? in homelessness. Fix the homeless problem here. There's a homeless problem in Louisville that needs to be fixed. Yeah, there's homeless shelters, but they're overcrowded and they're not serving enough food and uh, you guys are cutting the services. 
There's a reason why people choose to live out in the woods in these Fishervilles, okay? Well, we got three, four, five Fishervilles at least that I know. So actually, the best Fisherville is the one that stays invisible. Find yourself woods and tell nobody about it loud, nobody to know that you're there. Keep it silent. Keep it to yourself. And uh, maybe have some people from the inside, you know, uh, uh, film stuff and let the world know what you're going through, uh, but don't let anybody know the path that it was a it actually took to get there. You gotta cover up those tracks. Those tracks are just like in Batman, how he takes the Batmobile and he drives through the lane and all the, the leaves all coming up and going down and shit, they come right back, so hide, you know, cover your tracks. February 2nd, 2011, the Battle of the Camel, so in Egypt, I'm talking about the Egyptian Revolution, I'm going through the timeline. Violence escalated as waves of Mubarak supporters met anti-government protesters and some Mubarak supporters rode on camels and horses in the Tahir Square. Reportedly wielding swords and sticks, President Mubarak reiterated his refusal to step down February 2nd. So this is um, eight days after the revolution, right? The fifth, six days, seven days, eight days after the revolution. President Mubarak said he's not going to step down to several news agencies. Incidents of violence towards journalists and reporters escalated amid speculation that violence was being encouraged by Mubarak as a way to bring the protest to an end. So yeah, Mubarak was escalating the violence. It was him doing that. That's why journalists and the reporters are getting attacked. No journalist or reporter should be attacked. All they're doing is recording the events. They are non-biased, third-party people who are just recording the events. A true journalist is not getting inside the events, but they're taking a step back and they're observing the events. And actually that, the National Guard was a protection for civil rights, and the journalists, the photographers, were protection for the civil rights activists. So we got to remember these things because the military, the calls for law and order, that's how Nixon won, you know, his reelection against the hippies, against the peace and freedom and justice movements. He said law and order. So if the hippies can get order down, if they can figure out how to be organized and disciplined, then we will win. If we become order, orderly and, and disciplined, that's when the uh, progressives will win. So more discipline, more order and to allow democratic processes. So we're not anti-democracy. Uh, we are open-minded. We listen to everybody out. We're consensus-based. We want to hear what everybody has to say. Everybody's issue has a place at the table. And uh, it may just take finagling, talking to more people, talking about your ideas, getting working groups together, talking to more people, and talking to more people, and just keep on doing that until you, you know, you've got a place in society. you got a spot that where you feel useful and you're being productive and you're helping out the revolution. February 6, 2011. So this is 12 days okay, uh, after the revolution. So 12 days after the revolution. A multi-faith Sunday mass is held with Egyptian Christians and Egyptian Muslims, Tahir Square. So, a multi-faith Sunday Mass with both the Egyptian Christians and Muslims were doing it together. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. We do need to make connections like that. Cross counter connections. Get people, groups that you would typically wouldn't think would be uh, allies because we're all in this boat to, together. It's a multicultural society. America is a nation of immigrants. We're from all over the place. We're from all over the place. Some of us forced to immigrate. Negotiations involving Egyptian Vice President Omar Suleiman, Suleiman and representatives of the opposition commenced amid continuing protests throughout the nation. The Egyptian army assumed greater security responsibilities, maintaining order and guarding the Egyptian Museum of Antiquity. Solomon offered reforms, while others in Mubarak's regime accused foreign nations, including the U.S., of interfering in Egypt's affairs. February 10, 2011, that's uh, 16 days after the revolution. Mubarak finally addressed Egypt amid speculation of a military coup, but rather than resigning, as was widely expected, he simply stated he would delegate some of his powers to Vice President Suleiman while continuing as Egypt's head of state. Reactions to Mubarak's statement were marked by anger, frustration, and disappointment, and throughout various cities there was an escalation of the number and intensity of demonstrations. February 11, 2011, 17 days after the revolution, the Friday of departure, massive protests continued in many cities as Egyptians refused the concessions announced by Mubarak. Finally, at 6 p.m. local town, Suleiman announced Mubarak's resignation. 
entrusting the Supreme Council of Egyptian Armed Forces with the leadership of the country. Nationwide celebrations immediately followed. February 13, 2011, the Supreme Council dissolved Egypt's parliament, suspended the constitution in response to demands by demonstrators. The council declared that it would hold power for six months or until elections could be held. Calls were made for the Supreme Council to provide more details and specific timetables and deadlines. Major protests subsided but did not end in a gesture of a, to a new beginning. Protesters cleaned up and renovated Tahir Square, the epicenter of the demonstrations. Although many pledged they would continue protests until all the demands had been met. So SCAF takes over. The military takes over. The military takes over February 13, 2011. 13 plus 6 is 19 days after the revolution. So for nearly three, three weeks, the demonstrations went on. For three weeks, the revolution of Egypt, the mother of the world's revolution, the mother of Occupy, went on. I guess Tunisia is the spark. Muhammad Bouazizi. February 17, 2011, 23 days after the election. The army stated that it would not field a candidate in the upcoming presidential elections. Four important figures of the former regime, regime were detained on that day. Former Interior Minister Habib Al Adli, former Minister of Housing Ahmed Magarabi, former Tourism Minister Zuer Garana, and Field Tycoon Ahmed Az. March 2nd, 2011. So, 28. 26, 30 days after the revolution. I'm just going to say it's about a month after the revolution. March 2nd. The constitutional referendum was tentatively scheduled for 19th March 2011. March the 3rd, a day eight before large protests against him were planned, Ahmed Shafiq stepped down as prime minister and was replaced by Issam Sharaf. So Shafiq stepped down and Sharaf stands up. March the 5th, several state security intelligence buildings were raided across Egypt by protesters, including the headquarters for Alexandria Governorate and the main national headquarters in Nasir City, Cairo. Protesters stated they raided the buildings to secure documents they believed to show various crimes committed by the SSI, the state security intelligence, against the people of Egypt during Mubarak's rule. So they went into the police headquarters and they stole the papers to make sure that um, the evidence for what Mubarak had did during to, to the people would be known by everybody. March 6, 2011, from the Nasir City headquarters, protesters acquired evidence of mass surveillance and vote rigging. So they fucked with the votes. And there's mass surveillance, like the NSA program in America, noted rooms full of videotapes, piles of shredded and burned documents and cells where activists recount their experiences of detention and torture. March 19th, the constitutional referendum was held and passed by 77.27%. The constitutional referendum was held and passed by the overwhelming vast majority, 77%. So they passed the constitution. 77% is this by the people? March 19th, they passed the constitution. Parts of the interior ministry building catch fire during police demonstrations outside, March 22nd. March 23rd, the Egyptian cabinet orders a law criminalizing protests and strikes that hampers work at private or public establishments. Under the new law, anyone organizing or calling for such protests will be sentenced to jail and or a fine of LE 50,000, which is about 100,000 U.S. dollars. April 1st, 2011, the Save the Revolution Day. April 1st, 2011, Save the Revolution. Approximately 4,000 demonstrators filled Tahir Square for the largest protest in weeks, demanding that the ruling military council move faster to dismantle lingering aspects of the old regime. Protesters demanded trial for Hosni Mubarak, Gamal Mubarak, Ahmed, Fadi Sora, Saf Wat El Sheriff, and Zakaria Azmi as well. October 8, 2011. The Friday of cleansing. Hundreds of thousands of demonstrations again filled Tahir Square, criticizing the ruling Supreme Council of the Armed Forces, also known as SCAF. SCAF took over, right? The military took over, and they might allow for peaceful dem uh, uh, transition to democracy, or they might not. We're still watching it, still what's going on in Egypt, still seeing how it's going to turn out. The parliament was able to reconvene. Morzny was right about that, to reconvene the par parliament. So, 
Friday of clean, cleaning, cleaning. Hundreds of thousands of demonstrators again filled Tahir Square, criticizing the SCAF for not following through on revolutionary demands. They demand the resignation of remaining regime figures and the removal of Egypt's public, public prosecutor due to the slow pace of investigations of former corrupt officials. The Egyptian Revolution, more coming up. Occupy Louisville, We Are Change, Working Families Party, The Revolution Club, WFP, Working Families Party. All right, Johnny Tsunami, here for all eternity.